Mama knocked and opened the door to my room and found the 14-year-old me curled up in a ball and crying as if the world had come to an end. Filippa, Chichi, Hova Dichi, what has happened? I looked at her, my eyes as red as puffy as tomatoes, and I said, Mama, I lost everything, everything. Now we have no money at all. It was 1978. I was 14 and we had recently moved to Kenya. You see, in 1977, when Idi Amin killed the Archbishop and two ministers, my parents decided that it was time for us to leave Uganda. And so my father, my mother, my sisters, Maliza, Estella and Faye and my brother, Chris, Faye and Chris, were disabled and they had cerebral palsy. And I, all left Uganda. And for a while we ended up in three different countries. My father in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia. My mother, my sister Stella, Faye and Chris and I in Nairobi, Kenya. Estella in university, me in boarding school and mom with Faye and Chris and my sister Maliza in New York, in America, in university. Now in Nairobi, we lived in a maisonette on Raptor Road in Westlands, right next to the Continental Hotel. We had gone from being a typical African family. We lived in our own home, and we were surrounded by grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, even our friends' parents were our aunts and uncles. And now there we were split up as a family and living with a much smaller social network. For fun, what did we do? We watched TV, we put Faye and Chris in their wheelchairs and drive around the complex. We'd play in the garden. And on Sundays at the Continental Hotel, they would have traditional dances and traditional music. And so we'd eat our lunch quickly and go upstairs to the bedroom, which overlooked the swimming pool area at the hotel. And that's where they did the dances. And we'd watch them sing. And I would copy the dances. Mama taught me how to cash a check and I would sometimes do the shopping for the family. On this particular Saturday, it was the last Saturday of the school holidays and Mama called me to her room and said, Philippa, make a list of everything you need for school so that we can do the shopping. Tomorrow you're going back to school. So I went to my room and I wrote a list of everything I needed and everything I wanted and I took it to Mama. She looked at it and then she said, Tulawano. And so I sat down next to her and she said to me, Philippa, you can see our life has changed quite a lot since we left Uganda. We don't have a car, we don't have a telephone, but we're okay. And I said, yes, we are. And she said, you know, the money I earn as a teacher pays for the rent and there's a little money left over. And every month your father wires money to us from Addis Ababa and it takes two weeks for the bank to clear it. You know, there was no MoneyGram or Western Union or Mukuru money or mobile money or m -Pesa. Those things didn't exist. So it would take two weeks for the money to be cleared. Then she looked at me and she said, the money your father sent this month has not yet been cleared. It will be cleared next week. We have a little money left over. And so what I want us to do is for you to prioritize the things you need for next week and I will prioritize what we need. And then 
you can go to the bank, take out the last bit of money that we can take out, and you buy those things. And then next week, when my check is cleared, I will go to the shops and buy everything else, and I'll come to school and visit you. So I said, fine. Now, Mama was going to a meeting, and so we left home together, got to Westlands. She went off to her meeting. I went to the bank. I cashed the check. I put it in my wallet, my leopard skin wallet that Mama had given me. It was a wallet. It was a men's wallet. And I put it in my kiondo, that sisal basket that is so typically Kenyan. And I walked to Uchumi supermarket, and I bought the things that I needed. And then I crossed the road to the other shop and I got a basket and I went and I picked all the things that I needed and I stood in the line and got to the till and she rang it up and she said, this is how much you have to pay. So I put my hand into the kiondo. No wallet. I looked around me on the floor behind me at the people to see if they had taken my wallet, no wallet. I asked them if they'd seen my wallet, no. So I took everything out of my kiondo in case the wallet was hiding under the things, nothing. So I looked at the cashier and I said, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I can't take these things. I can't find my wallet. And then I went and I looked around the shop, retraced my steps, no wallet. So I walked out and I went to Chumi supermarket and I retraced my steps and I asked people in the shop and I asked the security, I asked the manager, no wallet. By now, I was fighting back the tears. So I decided to go home. I crossed Waiaki Way and I went across the field and I walked home tears streaming down my face and I had one thought mama had entrusted me with the last money we had as a family and I had lost it and now she was going to be at home with my brother and sister who were disabled with no money no food I got home and Milika who looked after Faye and Chris asked me what's wrong and I just ran past her to my room and locked the, closed the door. And I cried. I cried. And that's when Mama found me. And she sat down and asked me what had happened. And I told her. And she looked at me and she said, it looks like you were pickpocketed. And then she asked me, do you have the key to the post office, to the post box? Now, you know, the post box was really important because it was the only way we could communicate with the family. We didn't have any telephones. So letters were important. So I said, I started crying again. I said, Mama, it was in my wallet. And she looked at me and she said, you know what, Philippa? Did you go to the post office and tell them? I said, no. So she said, wash your face and let's go. I washed my face and then... We walked all the way back to Westlands, to the other side, to the post office, and I told them what had happened, and they said, it's okay, we'll lock the box, and Mama could go in and get her mail until they had changed the lock. And then we started walking back as if we were walking home, and Mama said, I think I know someone who could help us. And we walked to the butchery that was next to Chumi supermarket. And she asked to see the manager, an Indian man. And she told him what had happened. And then she asked him if she could give him a post dated check and if he could give us some money. And he said, yes. And he gave us the money and she gave him the check. And then we bought the things that we needed. And as we walked back home, I, I asked Mama, Mama, what is a post-dated check? And she said, it's a check he'll be able to get his money on Saturday when the money is in the bank. And then she looked at me and she said, don't worry, Philippa, we're going to be okay. 
and I looked at her and I knew that with Mama by my side, everything was going to be all right. We would weather this storm. My names are Philippa Namtebi Kawalikagwa. Thank you.